Hello and welcome back to Brain Nugget, the channel where we provide you with bite-sized pieces of knowledge that will help you understand your brain and your behavior. Today, we're going to talk about 5 social psychology tricks for getting what you want. Yes, you heard it right, we're going to teach you how to be a little sneaky in a fun and playful way. Trick number 1, the foot in the door technique. This technique works by asking for a small request first, and then following up with a larger request. The foot in the door effect is a psychological principle that can be used to influence people's behavior in a subtle way. Have you ever noticed that salespeople often start by asking for something small before asking for a larger purchase? For example, they might ask you to try a free sample of a product before asking you to buy the full-sized version. This is an example of the foot in the door effect. In social situations, you can also use the foot in the door effect to your advantage. For instance, if you're trying to persuade your friend to come to a concert with you, you could first ask them to listen to one of the band's songs. If they like it, they might be more willing to come to the concert with you. The reason this works is that humans have a strong desire to be consistent in their beliefs and actions. Once someone has agreed to a small request, it creates a sense of commitment and consistency that makes them more likely to agree to a larger request in the future. This is why the foot in the door effect is so powerful. However, it's important to use the foot in the door effect ethically and responsibly. You should never manipulate someone into doing something they don't want to do, and you should always respect their boundaries and preferences. Trick number two, the door in the face technique. This technique is the opposite of the foot in the door technique. It involves making a large request first, which will most likely be refused, followed by a smaller request that will seem more reasonable in comparison. You want your friend to lend you $100 for a concert ticket. You know your friend might be hesitant to give you that much money, so instead of asking directly, you start with a bigger request. You might say something like, Hey, do you have $500 I could borrow? I need it for rent. Your friend is likely to say no to that, but they'll feel bad and want to help you in some way. So, you follow up with a smaller request like, okay, no problem. How about $100 for a concert ticket instead? See how it works? By asking for something big first, you make the smaller request seem more reasonable and your friend is more likely to say yes. Trick number three, the scarcity principle. This technique involves creating the perception that something is rare or in short supply. People are more likely to want something that they believe is scarce. For example, have you ever been to a store and seen a sign that says only two left in stock or limited time only? That's an example of the scarcity principle at work. The store is trying to create a sense of urgency and scarcity to motivate you to make a purchase. But the scarcity principle isn't just used in marketing. It can also be used in social situations to influence behavior. Let's say you're trying to get your friend to come to a party with you. Instead of simply inviting them, you could say something like, Hey, I heard the party is going to be really exclusive and there are only a few spots left. You don't want to miss out on this. This creates a sense of scarcity and exclusivity that might make your friend more motivated to come to the party. The key to using the scarcity principle effectively is to create a sense of urgency without being pushy or manipulative. Be honest and respectful, and focus on the benefits of the scarce item or opportunity. So, whether you're trying to sell a product, persuade a friend, or just make the most of your own opportunities, keep the scarcity principle in mind. Trick number four, the social proof principle. This technique involves using the power of social influence to persuade someone to do something. People are more likely to follow the crowd and do what others are doing. Have you ever gone to a restaurant that was completely empty and felt hesitant to eat there? On the other hand, if you walk by a restaurant that has a long line of people waiting to get in, you might assume it's a great place to eat and be more likely to want to try it out. This is the social proof principle at work. We look to others for cues on how to behave in certain situations, especially when we're uncertain about what to do. But the social proof principle isn't just about conforming to the actions of others, it can also be a powerful tool for influencing others. 
For example, if you want to convince your friend to try a new activity with you, you could mention how popular it is and how many other people are doing it. This creates a sense of social proof that might make your friend more interested in trying it out. Most important is to use the social proof principle effectively to focus on the positive aspects of the behavior or activity you're promoting, and to avoid negative or manipulative tactics. So whether you're trying to fit in with a new group of friends, influence others to try something new, or simply understand why people behave the way they do, keep the social proof principle in mind. Trick number five is the likability principle. This technique involves making yourself more likable to someone in order to persuade them to do something. People are more likely to say yes to someone they like. For example, if you want to ask your crush out on a date, you might compliment them and find common interests to bond over. One easy way to do this is by practicing active listening. When someone is speaking, make sure to listen and ask open-ended questions that show you're interested in what they have to say. Another important aspect of the likability principle is to use positive body language. Smile, maintain eye contact, and use appropriate gestures to show that you are engaged and open to communication. People will be more willing to trust and agree with someone who is approachable and friendly. Don't be afraid to be yourself. Authenticity is key to establishing trust and respect with others. When you're genuine, people will see that you're not trying to manipulate them and they will be more likely to believe what you're saying. Before we go, I want to give you one more bonus tip. This tip involves the power of reciprocity. Reciprocity is the idea that if someone does something for you, you will feel an obligation to do something for them in return. You can use this principle to your advantage by doing something nice for someone before asking them for a favor. For example, if you want your friend to help you move, you might first offer to help them with a project they've been working on. The key to using the power of reciprocity is to be genuine and thoughtful in your actions. Don't just do something nice for someone to get something in return, do it because you genuinely care about them and want to help. Lastly, let's talk about the downsides of persuading people and getting what you want. Now, don't get us wrong, there's nothing inherently wrong with persuading others or trying to get what you want but there are some downsides to keep in mind. First of all, if you're constantly trying to persuade others, you might start to come across as manipulative or insincere. Nobody likes feeling like they're being tricked or manipulated, so it's important to be honest and genuine in your approach. Another downside is that it can create tension or conflict in your relationships. If you're always pushing your own agenda or trying to get others to do what you want, it can make them feel unheard or undervalued. So keep that in mind also. Additionally, constantly focusing on getting what you want can make you lose sight of the bigger picture. You might become so focused on achieving your own goals that you forget about the needs and wants of others or the consequences of your actions. And there you have it, five social psychology tricks for getting what you want. Did you find this content to be insightful? We truly hope so. Which trick gave you the most value? Please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching Brain Nugget, and we'll see you in the next video.